Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be doing my cash cows for round 11 going through who I think is sort of the best um, guys to select given their break even and probably more so now looking at job security especially during the buys as um, we have at least from my perspective I've not kept up with my bench hygiene and um, so that means that I have a lot of guys that are potentially out this week. Um, and I sort of, I thought that Hugo Garcia was going to be back, but it sounds awfully like he's not going to be back given that Saints basically have two rookies, um, injured and their whole list is injury free. So it looks like that's not going to be the case. So I'd be very surprised now thinking about it again, if, um, Hugo Garcia was back. So that's why I think a lot of my, um, thoughts are based on job security, at least for the short term in terms of the buys and maybe losing 20, 30 K of cash gen but going for a guy that's going to be there um, just because, and hopefully not sub, as the sub rule is horrific. Um, but anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into this video. So first of all, I just wanted to show you something that will be coming more often to the channel is, um, is stuff like this, which are polls um, that'll head, uh, get done roughly about a day or so or anywhere from a day to um, the night before vi these videos go live going through and just sort of picking the best four um, options in my belief for the video. We have one for as here for the Cash Cows with Joe Richards, Revel, Frazier and McAuliffe and then you've also got one, uh, if I go down a little bit here that I posted as well going through the best trade targets for round 11 as well and i do say excluding rookies because you know well most of us will be doing one up one down but the rookies were and this is just taken from the um uh from the most traded in guys and it's the top four non-rookie players basically and so that's where you get that list there and this was posted um roughly no it was taken the the, the points of data were taken at roughly about 12 midnight also, but anyway, let's jump into this video with the cash cows of the week in Joe Richards minus 14 break even. Um, I really do think that he's a really good player and um, I just wonder if this is very eerily similar to what happened to Darcy Jones and Darcy Jones was a good, good pick. But are we looking at role or scoring here? Because I don't know if Joe Richards necessarily has, I don't think he has the best role. And I genuinely don't think with Jordan Degoe coming in and out of the side, and then know Jordan Degoe is playing uh, more full, uh, more midfield than uh, Joe Richards would be playing. But I think that they're generally trying to ease Jordan Degoe back in through the forward line. And also, I think that um, McCreary is out this, or McCreary is most likely coming back in this week. So, and they've already got two guys debuting. So I just genuinely think that uh, that Sullivan and um, Richards are somewhat. A little bit on the ropes unless they go um but then again they have um ed allen i think playing a game and this is what i was talking about with the these guys is they could play one game and then not play again and they'll have a good uh, score like a 60 or 70 but then they won't play again so i'm just a little bit worried about joe richard's job security in comparison to the other guys that i know have uh, basically been given a role a decent role in a side till a certain point in the season a la um, Joel Frazier, which we'll get to. So Joe Richards, I think, um, yes, he's got a great break even, but I'm just wondering if he's necessarily the greatest pick. One, because he's priced at 297, and he's one of the more expensive rookies. But two, I think that he could genuinely be, um, I guess, just a little bit um, inflate, not inflated because that's obviously its price, but I think his, um, need is a little bit more inflated for a lot of people. And I think he's, I think he's the most traded in rookie at the moment. Um, I just think that Joel Frazier and Kane McAuliffe are potentially better just because they're in there because of, ma uh, of long-term, longer-term injuries. Whereas Joe Richards, um, it feels like he's just a week or two away from potentially being dropped. Um, Pete Ling doesn't get a game at this point. Uh, so yeah, that sucks for him. Bruce Revel uh, with Zach Bailey now, um, and I had a and we Michael Wheatling did a good post about this, and he was also replying to comments, and I think the same sort of sentiment came across, is that Zach Bailey um, is coming back in this week is a test to play, and the Brisbane don't really have a chance to sort of let uh, Zach Bailey get to form in the VFL because they're so far behind. They're currently, what, four, five, and one. 
And th- yes, they are a damn good chance of getting through at 12-1 and 12-10 and 1 or whatever, 12-1 and 10, whatever way you want to put the draw there. They are a good chance of getting it on 50 points. So that means they have to win eight of their last, what, 13? And, and they can do that, but it's very hard. If if we're in the same situation but looking at the Swans, and Swans are in Brisbane, uh, sorry, Brisbane are in Swans situation, let's just take that example, and they're nine and one. Zach Bailey ain't coming back this week. He's spending a week in the VFL, he's getting maybe three quarters of game time, and then he's working into it. But because Brisbane are in a must-win scenario, basically, he needs to come back in. Uh, because not only do they want to just scrape into the eight, they want to cannonball into the top eight, get top... I mean, top four is out of the question, basically, at this point, unless they win 13 of 13. If they finish 7, 1, and 5, they will get they will get top four. But, or even probably 16, 1, and 5. They could, yeah, they'll get through... They need to win something like 11 out of their last 13 or 12 out of their last 13 upwards to get top four. But... They are. They need to do serious damage in this part, last part of the season if they want to do anything in finals because teams that finish 7th or 8th don't do anything. They usually just get knocked first week. The only team that I think has done anything serious has been the uh, Bulldogs winning it and I think GWS getting uh, one kick away from the grand final. And that's the most that I can think of basically since 2012. Um, there's probably another example or two in there, but so that just shows that they need to win. And the need to win means that Bruce Rebel may be sub, uh, may be sub or something like that. Might be sub. And um, so, yeah, I just think don't think he has the best job security at 311k. I would be passing on him. Joel Frazier, I think this is what the rookie of the week, to be honest with you. He's shown that he can score a 57 and uh, 57 average, 51 in the last game. And uh, you see here 62 in his first. If I just make this a little bit bigger for you. There you go. Um, so that just shows he can do what he needs to do. 51 here. Um, and he's got this role because JJ is injured. JJ is injured, Joe Hannison, until I believe round 15. If um, And don't exactly quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's where I saw it. Round 15, basically after the bye. So, and that's what we need Joel Frazier for. We need him for bye coverage because he's. we need some rookies to play just because we want to get up to 22 playing. So this is why I think Joel Frazier is the best guy because maybe he's... A little bit worse than um, than Richards. Maybe he's just a little bit worse. Average 15 worse than Richards. He's probably just going to be a 10 worse than Richards in terms of scoring. But he's going to be there. And that's the main thing that I think makes him a better prospect than uh, Joe Richards. Plus, also, you save 31k as well. So you can almost make a big move there potentially as well. So that's why I would be looking at Joel Frazier. Kate McAuliffe, I think, is an interesting one as well. I went early... Well, not early on him, but I sort of had to go for him as he was the only guy that I could trust that had actually played footy. Um, and I think he's another good one. Um, I'm just a little bit worried potentially about the Richmond sort of... We saw an almost an, an injury exodus, and I think that uh, exodus is going to come back very, very soon. So I am a little bit worried about Kane McAuliffe's job security. I think it's a little bit more secure than the likes of... Um, and we can actually check this. Richmond injury list... Uh, let's go here. 16 hours. Baker, test. Trezice, test. Banks, test. Campbell, test. Bauer, test. Um, yeah, like, look at this. This is their main midfield group. And then you've also got Liam Baker as well. And they're all within two to three weeks, which is basically the buy. Um, so, yes, I'm a little bit concerned that their injury list is... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 injuries and already five of them are season. The, these guys are season. Like, um, Kalina and Fawcett are going to be season. Rioli is effectively season at this point. As is he really going to come back with? So they've effectively got six guys on the season-ending injury list. Ross is almost, almost at that point as well. If he doesn't make a good rook good start in the next two or three weeks to be season. So they're getting towards six or seven guys being on their injury list for the season. Um, and yeah, it would be nice if a couple of those guys were sort of midfielders, out and out midfielders, but their midfield group, as you see here, is mostly heading back in the next three weeks. And the next three weeks is basically on their bye, as I believe they have round 15. So they got uh, round 11, 12, 13. So he basically covers the non-important bye rounds. As the big buy rounds are going to be 
these two here and they ha they sit on one of the buy rounds as well so that is a little bit annoying that um that we get no coverage there potentially for k mccullough so hopefully they don't um they ease those guys back in maybe play them in the vfl because you know you're gonna not um, because you don't want to re-injure Tim Taranto when you're playing, not you're probably playing for nothing at that point. Um, they could easily be what one, two, three, four. They could easily be what one and thirteen is that one and yeah one and thirteen heading into their buy. So yeah, will be interesting with uh, Richmond what they do. But K McCall's job security isn't the most convincing. Then you have Toby Conway, who's done really well, but they seem to be just easing him in and out, like they play him once every two to three weeks. And it is annoying because he's a really good uh, quality Ruckman, and I think he will be one of the better Ruckman in the comp when he actually gets to play full games and will be a fancy relevant prospect. But at the moment, you just cannot have guys sitting on the bench at the moment. Nguyen, uh, sorry, Biggie, um, new one, is just not playing regularly enough. Lockie Sullivan, I still think he's got um, really good prospects and uh, 59 average. He did score 55 last week, but I just think he's one that you can um, jump on. Uh, I wouldn't say jump on now, um, but I would definitely say just yeah, hold him, obviously. Try and keep him on the bench as well. Not playing would be better. Louis Johnson, um, defender 339k playing as I believe. Is he playing as a defender? I'd have to look at that because I thought he was playing as a forward, to be honest with you. Let me just check. One go one. It looks like he might not be playing as a forward, even though I thought I saw him in forward areas. So let me just check DFS. I can check his heat map, and that'll be uh, the way that we get his sort of known position. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is it? They played here. Why did I not go from the first game of the week? And then he got an 89, I believe it was. So let's check here. Heat map. That is definitely playing as a forward. So yeah, I am not looking at him there, to be honest with you. And I just want to check his other game to check if he would. Because I was going to say, I swear he's a small forward. If we look here, his other game was even more so. Yeah, that is a small forward, if I've ever seen one. So yeah, that's um that positioning is not a defender. So I wouldn't touch Lloyd Johnson. Dean's not playing. Voss isn't playing enough. Cal Shadir doesn't have... I, after I said he had really good job security, his job security is not there necessarily, and um, he's a key forward as well, so I wouldn't go there, to be honest with you. That was a wrong call by me to say he had good job security, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, Vicentini, I thought he got mauled in the ruck by Meek, so I don't think he will be there again. Logan Morris, I think that um, also potentially with Logan Morris, that him um, or Breville, one of them is going to get impacted, so I would just not go there, and he hasn't really been putting up scores anyway, and sort of that sub-affected game, um, even though it was so early, I don't think he's really, if you look here, he's not had really a score that pops out and really breaks down the break-even wall. Nemoyle, similar to Toby Conway, is going to be good once he plays, but he's going to have that annoying sort of, he's going to be priced at like 600k next year, just because he's averaging 80 and has played two games. He's starting to get to the point now where um, he doesn't get a massive... Well, he's got a discount factor of zero. Of um, He'll be discounted by an effect of 0 0.76. So that probably puts him around a 60 average at the moment, give or take. Um, Payne, McRae... McRae, I just don't like him at the moment. We saw um, his role, I don't think, is there. Sam Day, terrible role, to be honest, for fantasy. Jordan Sweet will get back into the side, but I think he's just cooked um, with Soldo one to two weeks away. Mullins a lockdown guy, so I don't like him. Phillips played one game, key, key defender, so don't like his role. Hardwick is a is a forward slash defender, so I don't like his role and the the chance that he just plays forward and has like a one goal day where he puts up a fifty. Sexton is, we're going to talk about him in the trade targets, and then you're sort of getting up to the point where these guys are guys that are either not going to, are not going to play, like uh, Corey Warner is at the moment, or haven't played at all, as you see here with the guys that have a break even of 25. So that pretty much is the video there going through the uh, cash cows for round 11. I think I did cover the... Um, the top four that I mentioned in the uh, community post. So yeah, remember to go across to my community post or just try and put notifications, etc., on for that so you can get your votes in. But uh, that pretty much is the video and I'll see you guys in the trade targets video. Bye guys.